Good morning. Welcome to Green Christians Daily Prayer Prayer Time for COP29. These prayers have been written by a team from Green Christian. In the silences, please offer up your own prayers. Today's prayers will again be led by Barbara Eklin, Green Christian Vice Chair. The introductory and final prayers are by John Bell of the Iona Community. Good morning, everyone. And we start this day, as we have all of them, with one of John Bell's prayers. Please join in with a response, we bless you, for the first prayer and respond at the end of the silences later with Hear Our Prayer. God, our creator, maker of color, sound, texture, movement, and the ceaseless beauty in living things, we bless you. God, our creator, maker of granite and mustard seed, of grey cloud and starlight, of earthquake and heartbeat. We bless you. God, our creator, maker of all that is unseen and of all that has been, that words could never capture. We bless you. God, our creator, we, the children of your life, the beneficiaries of your kindness, guardians of your creation. We bless you. We bless you for your making, your trusting, your loving, your never ending goodness. Amen. As expected, the negotiations are continuing into today mainly focused on finance, which was the purpose of this COP. The draft text lists a concrete goal of $250 billion a year in climate finance from richer nations to developing countries by 2035. There are hints this could rise to something around $300 billion. But there's also a wider ambition to ramp up finance from a range of sources to at least $1.3 trillion which is what a recent UN-backed report said is needed. And there's still pushback on repeating the call from COP28, phase down fossil fuels. Comments on what's going on there? First from Rita Thunberg. The people in power, she says, are yet again about to agree a death sentence. Countless people whose lives have been or will be ruined by the climate crisis. Another respected voice, Mary Robinson, says rich countries' budgets are stretched by inflation, COVID and conflicts, including Russia's war in Ukraine. And she warned, poorer countries may have to compromise. How do we respond? I suggest we follow the example of Ruth Jarman, who some years ago went to the Psalms as a source of prayer in the face of climate disaster. I'm going to read you Ruth's adaptation of Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength, an ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear Though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the sea, though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, a source of blessing to refresh us as we fight the enemy. Pour on us your spirit, O Lord, and equip us for battle. Do not fail us now when we need your sustaining power. Give us the time, Lord, to defeat 
climate change before it takes your world to rack and ruin. Give us the energy and hope we need to keep going when all seems lost. Give us the funding to do battle against rich vested interests. Give us the people with the necessary talent and wisdom that comes from you. Be our ever present help in these troubled times. Dispel the night of danger by your dawn of deliverance. Where leaders stoop to feed our ever-growing hunger for more and more, open their eyes to the wisdom of simplicity. Where governments buy our votes with cheap flights and petrol, open their ears to the laws of nature that are simply are screaming at us to put, stop pushing their limits. Lord, make our thirst for fossil fuels cease to the ends of the earth. Break our addiction to dirty energy. Shatter the clutch of consumerism. Quench our desire for more and more material things. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. May God be our help in this time of trouble. In the silence, let us pray. <clears throat> In your mercy, hear our prayer. Carl Sagan once said, we are the local embodiment of consciousness grown to self-awareness. We're star stuff, pondering the stars. And author Samantha Harvey added, we're earth stuff, pondering the earth. What we do to the earth, we do to ourselves. And what we do to life on earth, human and otherwise, we do to ourselves. Let us pray for the people who speak for and not against the earth. For and not against the dignity, other humans, other life. For all the humans who speak for and call for and work for peace, justice and the integrity of creation. For those climate activists in countries like Colombia who are killed for defending God's creation. For climate campaigners in the UK who are currently in prison. For other climate campaigners who face court trials in the coming weeks, especially our own dear friends, such as Ruth Jarman and the Reverend Sue Parfit. In the silence, let us pray. And today, our final day, ending with the prayer for the earth from Pope Francis in Laudato Si. All powerful God, you are present in the whole universe, in the smallest of your creatures. You embrace with tenderness all that exists. Pour out upon us the power of your love that we may protect life and beauty. Fill us with peace, that we may live as brothers and sisters, harming no one. O God of the poor, help us to rescue the abandoned and forgotten of this earth, so precious in your eyes. Bring healing to our lives, that we may protect the world, 
and not prey on it. That we may sow beauty, not pollution and destruction. Touch the hearts of those who look only for gain at the expense of the poor and the earth. Teach us to discover the worth of each thing, to be filled with awe and contemplation, to recognize that we are profoundly united with every creature as we journey towards your infinite light. We thank you for being with us each day. Encourage us, we pray, in our struggle for justice, love and peace. Amen.